Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. And yes, again, folks, we are talking about the JRC today. This is going to be the first of at least a couple of videos. Thinking about maybe doing another one. We'll see. Uh, this is the article from NBCNews.com. I will make sure to include the link of the article in the description for you. Where we autism rights advocates and disability rights advocates and basically anybody with a humanitarian bone in their body found out that the many decades long fight over electroshock that led to a FDA ban is actually not been enforced due to COVID. So places like the JRC are actually, in spite of the ban, still shocking the crap out of their students. This is the article that has led to the barrage of videos that you have seen so far on my channel, including the seven-part series that go over the 2012 trial uh, with the JRC versus Andre McCollins' mother, Cheryl McCollins. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and read this here since this is the article that got the ball rolling. It states... A decades-long fight over electric shock treatment led to an FDA ban, but the fight is far from over. What they're doing is just taking people that have issues and just building more, said Rico Torres, who was first shocked at eight years old. And if you remember these from the videos, that's the JRC. This is by Cynthia McFadden, Kevin Monahan, and Adiel Kaplan. And this was done back on April the 28th, 2021. It took a while to get around to all of us, unfortunately. <coughs> Excuse me. Missouri allergies, folks. Not as bad today, but we'll see. Rico Torres was just eight the first time school staffers strapped electrodes to his legs and shocked him. They draped a 12-volt battery over his shoulders in a backpack, while a nearby teacher held a clear plastic box with a photo of his face attached. When Torres misbehaved, the teacher would reach inside the box and push a button that sent a two-second jolt of electricity coursing through his body. Under his court-approved treatment plan, Torres could be shocked for threatening to hit another student or for running away, swearing, or screaming, refusing to follow directions, inappropriate urination, according to the court records obtained by NBC News. One employee, he said, used to shock him in his sleep. Because I didn't wake up, she shocked me, called Torres, now 24. Then I ended up peeing the bed, so she shocked me again. Oh, my God. The electrode stayed on his skin 24 hours a day for most of a decade until he was 18. The device called the Graduated Electronic Decalator, GED, was part of his treatment at the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center in Canton, Massachusetts, which has for a half a century been one of the most controversial institutions for people with disabilities in the country. It's thought to be the only place in the world that uses electronic shocks to modify behavior, a treatment the United Nations has called torture. Remember, I told you about that before. In early M March last year, just one week before the declaration of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Food and Drug Administration took the rare step of banning the device, finding that significant risk of harm outweighed any medical benefit it could bring. It is only the third such ban in the agency's history. It seemed like the culmination of a decades-long battle between disability rights advocates, former residents, and the state of Massachusetts on one side, pushing to stop the use of the device or shut down the school altogether, and the center and its supporters, many of them parents who say the school and the shock device saved their children's lives. That's just fucking sick. They, they, they disgust me. They really do. The ban should have meant victory for those fighting the school. But more than a year later, 
it hasn't actually changed anything. Due to court battles and the pandemic, none of the 55 residents currently approved for treatment with the device will be required to transition it off it until further legal decisions. If past litigation over the school's use of the GED is any indication, that could be years. Supporters say that the methods used by the center, which serves a mix of children and adults, are best and sometimes last hope to address some of the most difficult developmental and emotional disability cases in the country. Many students at the center have severe autism disorders and are nonverbal and dangerously self-harming. So shocking them is the answer? Torturing them is the answer? Really, Karen? Some have been kicked out or rejected by half a dozen other schools and treatment programs. That's that's the apology. The GED is only used as a treatment of last resort, and its recipients are at the risk of grievous bodily harm or even death without it. Really? Was Andre? Was Andre? Yeah, no, I don't think so. The Judge Rotenberg Center and the JRC Parents Association said in a joint statement, the groups called the FDA ban arbitrary and capricious and the, at the GED, GED court-approved and monitored life-saving treatment. Life-saving my ass. That's what's going to save my life? Kill me. Just, just cut the wire, because seriously. Today, those approved for the device are all over the age of 18 with severe developmental disabilities. Why does that matter? Why does that even need to be stated? It doesn't matter what their disabilities are. Nobody deserves to be treated like that. Some were first put on it years or even decades ago when they were children. The FDA ban required new treatment plans for anyone on the device and for them to be moved off it within 180 days. Those transitions are now stalled while the pandemic state of emergency remains in effect. JRC is also challenging the ban in federal court. When the ban was announced, disability rights advocates rejoiced. Nancy Wise, who has been advocating against the use of painful procedures at JRC since 1993, recalls weeping on the phone with a former school resident. We thought that was it, but it's not, she said a year later. All right, folks. Wise, the director of the National Leadership Consortium on Developmental Disabilities at the University of Delaware, keeps a running timeline of all the efforts to change the school's practices or close it down altogether, any extensive legal battles around it. I think it's going to drag on, she said. I'm 67. I'm retiring this year. I think if I see this place closed before I'll di I die, it will be a miracle. The Judge Rotenberg Center has been controversial since its start in the 1970s. It was established under a different name in neighboring Rhode Island to take most of the difficult cases and use aversive or negative consequences to modify behavior. From slaps with paddles to pinches, white noise helmets, noxious smells like ammonia. The controversy grew after the center created the GED in the early 1990s generating national media attention in a slew of lawsuits. The school said the GED worked in cases where other treatments did not, but it also found that over time, the efficacy of the device declined for some students. So the institution created a second version of the device with a stronger electric current. But JRC's founding director, Matthew Israel, told NBC News, is much more powerful and much more effective. The JRC has long defended its practices as the most humane approach for the most challenging to treat cases. Humane. Humane. Shocking someone nearly to death is humane, ladies and gentlemen. Do you, do you see that right there? The shock device has no detrimental effects whatsoever. <laughs> you are so full of shit. Israel told ABC News in 2007. In a conversation at the time with correspondent Cynthia McFadden, now with NBC News, he said the GED had to hurt to work. 
and pushed back against allegations that the device was torture. The real torture Israel said is these children are subjected to if they don't have this program. They are drugged up to the gills with drugs that cause them to be so sedated they essentially sleep all day. I'll take the drugs. I will take the drugs over what Andre went through. I will take the drugs any day over what Andre went through, what those kids go through, you sick son of a bitch. Here I thought there would be no commentary. Sorry, folks. The school has weathered controversy thanks to a team of lawyers and a core group of devoted family members like Louisa Goldberg, a longtime parent advocate. Like many of the school's staunchest defenders, her son Andrew arrived as a teenager and has remained there for two decades. Oh my God, she's sick. This is what I'm talking about when I told you about these true believers. She's one of the individuals I'm talking about. She really doesn't like us. In 2019, the JRC assembled a group of 30 family members of residents who spoke to NBC News about the struggles they faced seeking care for their loved ones, many of whom have histories of severe self-harm. They were hospitalized, retrained, drugged into stupors, and secluded in padded rooms, the family said. They argued to the courts, to the FDA, and to NBC News that JRC and its unorthodox practices saved their child's lives. I'd rather be dead them to go to this school. Can I be honest to you? As an autistic person, if I had to choose between death and that school, I'll choose death. And I'm sure their kids would too. Just saying. This treatment is just wonderful, said Goldberg. Before arriving at the JRC, Andrew was extremely aggressive, she said. He was heavily medicated and restrained until he became ultimately like a zombie. But after going on the GED, his aggression stopped and his personality came out. It's called appeasing your abuser, sweetheart. You ever hear about it? We can fake all kinds of crap if it means that I'm not going to be tortured. Goldberg's story was echoed by a gathered families. When nothing else worked, they said, and nowhere else would take their loved ones and provide full-time care, JRC did. So the parents are fighting to keep the school open and fighting hard. That hurts. Their opposition includes disability rights advocates and former residents like Torres. You say the GED is extremely painful and used to control minor misbehavior like swearing, are failing to follow directions. JRC disputes both claims. Torres, who went to school to the school for severe behavior disorders, was born to deaf parents who lost custody of him for substance abuse related neglect when he was three. He spent his early childhood bouncing between schools, treatment programs, and several psychiatric hospitalizations due to violent behavior. By the time he was seven, Torres had been diagnosed with a range of disorders from ADHD to attachment disorder, and his behavior had become increasingly violent. After a psychiatric hospitalization, he was transferred to the JRC. A year later, he arrived at the school. They fitted him with the backpack he would wear for most of the next decade. I was a really aggressive as a child, Torres said. I don't know where my violence came from, but I know that my mom and my dad weren't the best of parents. Torres said that the shocks did not give him what he needed most, help in communicating with others, given his early childhood in a non-speaking home. He still struggles with it. What they're doing is just taking people that have issues and just building more, he said. Thank you. Activists point to a history of scandals as examples of how the GED can be abused and why the school should be shut, shuttered. Three students died at the school between 1985 and 1990, including one who died while restrained. After the introduction of the GED in the early 90s, the most controversial cases centered around the device. In 2002, resident Andre McCollins was tied to a restraint board for seven hours and shot 31 times after he didn't take off his jacket when told to. The episode only became public a decade later when a video of Ms. McCollins uh, McCollin screaming, stop, stop, that hurts, while repeatedly being shocked surfaced during a lawsuit brought by his mother. McCollin spent more than a month hospitalized after the incident, 
never returning to the JRC. And that, folks, is the truth. When I say he went to baseline in a week, lies. In 2007, another student was shocked 77 times in just one night after a prank caller instructed staff to do so. Several years later, director Matthew Israel was accused of destroying a surveillance tape of that night and indicted on obstruction of justice charges. Israel entered a deferred prosecution agreement, which let him plead not guilty, but required five years probation and that he resign as director of the school, which he had run for 40 years. The charges were dismissed after the probation period. It's a shame. He deserves jail. Israel is now retired and living in California. He told NBC News that while he knows the treatment is not popular, the GED was necessary, fucking necessary, for cases where nothing else worked, and he believed he made a contribution to mankind. A contribution to mankind. Sick son of a bitch. God, I hate that man. Back in the... I'm not even going to read the rest of that. I'm just going to continue with the article. Sorry. Back in Massachusetts, Glenda Crooks, who took over as executive director when Israel stepped down in 2011, said the incidents that sparked the public outcry are all in the past. We made countless changes to our policies and procedures, including limitations to the GED device and a different set of training for staff that are certified to utilize the GED device. Or here's a thought, a thought. Don't shock students. Thought. God. Many of those who have been put on the GED are nonverbal, so they cannot speak for themselves. But several former residents who wore the device for years testified to the FDA when the agency was considering the ban, sharing their negative experiences. Both of the times after getting shocked, I would get a very bad muscle cramp that would last me for one or two days. I would get burn marks on my skin, said one. I experiences from the GED have affected me to this day, said another. I now suffer from a fear of authority, a fear of being controlled, and I panic when presented with either. NBC News spoke to three behavioral health experts who described the use of painful negative feedback as an obsolete treatment. Thank you. And see, this is, this is the electrode, folks, strapped to the students. See that? These are the areas they shock. Many years ago, people thought maybe you would learn faster if you not only got things that you'd like when you did something people wanted you to do. But if you had some negative event right after you do something you're not supposed to do, said Catherine Lord, distinguished professor, bleh, professor of psychiatry at UCLA School of Medicine, whose research focuses on autism and related disorders. There was some data that people did learn faster. But the point was that once the negative goes away, the old habits come back. For lasting change, experts told NBC News, research supports developing positive behaviors. Po positive behavioral practice. I've told you guys about this. Through teaching and rewarding alternative, less harmful behaviors rather than just de-incentivizing undesirable ones. Part of the challenge, though, of applying that research to severe self-harm cases is that they often require specialized around the clock care that can be near impossible to get. As a country, we do not have adequate services for kids who really need very significant, specialized, and often 24 hour support, Lord said. There are very few places in the United States that address this well, and those spots are hard to come by and they're very expensive. JRC has long filled that gap, advertising its near zero rejection expulsion policy to desperate parents and school systems with nowhere else to send children. Today, many of the school students, though not necessarily those wearing the GEDs, are teenagers of color with emotional and behavioral issues sent by schools. 
family courts, and juvenile justice system, many from New York City's low-income areas. Oh my god! You discriminatory, prejudiced, evil, racist son of bitches! Wow! Torres was one of those students. He said he was also one of the few students without severe developmental disabilities using the GED. He was put on the device roughly a year into his time at the school because less intrusive behavior modification techniques had not been successful according to his treatment plan, which had to be approved by a local judge. In his final years there, still wearing the GED, the FDA began looking into the device. The agency assembled a panel of experts to study it, held hearings, and read thousands of pages of testimony and documentation from the school. After two years, the FDA announced it would ban the GED, but took another four years to finalize the rule. It finally banned the devices on March 6, 2020, stating they present an unreasonable and substantial risk of illness or injury. The ban applies to a category of electrical stimulation devices used for self-injurious or aggressive behavior, but the agency noted only one facility in the country uses such devices, the Judge Rotenberg Center. JRC decried the ban, saying in a statement that it would prove in court that during its rulemaking process, the FDA abandoned science and ignored countless hours of testimony and volumes of information and hit expert testimony supporting the use of the GED. You snug sons of bitches. Gotta hate these people. It has since petitioned a federal court to review the ban. JRC has successfully used courts to quash the opposition through decades of government challenges, including actions by the states of Massachusetts and New York and the Federal Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. A ruling in the favor of the school after one state attempt to stop it from using it versus in the 1980s, before the use of the GAD, led the school to rename itself after the judge that ruled in its favor. With around 275 residents, at an average cost of 275000 per student per year, largely covered by state governments and school systems, JRC takes in more than $78.6 million. Torture pays, apparently. God, this is sick. And gross receipts yearly, according to recent tax documents. The school as a lawyer has represented it for more than 30 years. It paid his firm $1.7 million in 2018. God. It pays to be a torture school, apparently. During his time at JRC, Torres said he was one of the youngest people on the device and one of the few able to speak. He describes it as isolating, humiliating experience. Torres has been back in New York City for three years now, but said he is still trying to figure out how to function in regular society. He spent nearly half his life attached to the GED and much of his living memory. When he finally had his electrodes removed, he said that he began having cravings and trouble sleeping. My pain tolerance has gone to the point that I can't really feel anything. I get tattoos as a reminder of it, Torres says. Sometimes all I crave is pain. And there you have it, folks. That is the article that got us all fired up. They are fighting us again. They are continuing to use these devices, and they are insisting, insisting that such treatment of our most vulnerable people is actually saving lives. They're true believers. No matter what we show them, these people are convinced, convinced that the torture these kids are enduring as we speak is saving them. It's making them better. Again, it reminds me of that Metallica song, Sanitarium Welcome Home, the lyric that goes a little something like this. Keep him tied, it makes him well. He's getting better, can't you tell? That's these folks. 
So, unfortunately, our decades-long struggle c- continues on. The campaign has re-begun, and as we go through it, I will be continuing to review everything about this center so that you have a full round knowledge of just what it is we're up against. I'm going to be showing you the promotional materials that people like Cheryl McCollins would have seen when they are taking it to the schools, when they are taking it to desperate mothers. We're going to hear from those parents that absolutely are convinced that this school has saved their child's lives. We're going to be going over quite a bit of information, so expect continuing videos on this. Now, in the meantime, we are finished up with this one for now. I do appreciate your time this afternoon. Now, folks, as always, we don't get many views on this channel. The few views that we do get can be be removed from time to time. So if you could, please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit, uh, excuse me, hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. Anything you can do to help this in the algorithm and get these videos out, this is important. It's very desperate. And it looks like we're in for more long haul fighting. Whatever. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, folks. I do appreciate your time this afternoon. And until the next vid, we here at Spilling Tea says we hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.